We're sure everyone's really busy at your firm, and we know how important it is to track the time your team members spend working on a client's file. Not only that, but what about the time they're not working for a specific client? What about those non-chargeable hours, like the meetings and training sessions and all that? And how about expenses that drive back and forth to the client's office, the plane trip taken for the audit review, the hotel costs, or maybe even it's as simple as charging a client for the paperwork being couriered back and forth? In TPS, we help you keep track of all this so that your workflow and billing processes run so smoothly. Let's take a look at TPS now so I can show you the time entry screen quick overview. So here we are on the time entry screen and I've already populated one line of time entry for you. Now keep in mind that there will be a video on how to enter time and set it to WIP, etc. So for this time entry screen overview, we'll just be going over everything you see on the screen. First on the upper left we have our calendar. It automatically puts us at today's date. We could go back and take a look at the 13th, the 16th, we can go forward and look at the 30th. We can jump around on this calendar and enter time as we see fit, or go back to a date to change something that we've done. I'll tell you about this agenda kind of area down here in just a little bit. But let's take a look at the icons that we have up here for us. The first one is the new time data entry. As soon as you click this, it starts you on the process of entering time. So you basically just fill out all this information here and it comes down here. You can see the fields are the same. I'll go ahead and quickly do this one for you just so I can have something in here. Do payroll processing. Put this for four hours. There we go. We've got our time entry down here. Copy time data entry means that I want to copy everything from one line of time entry to do over again. So for example, you might be doing the same job, the same work code job, payroll processing, for multiple clients. And instead of coming in and entering all of this individually, you could just copy this and keep doing that, copy a bunch of these, and you could just come in and change the clients if you wanted to, or change the time that you're working on them. You could make changes to it, but without having to actually come in here and enter all this information for each one of these lines. So then after copying, I could come in here and just change just some of these clients, so maybe come in real quick and change this one to Cottonwood Industries, change this one to Dallas Automotive, change this one downtown lock and key, and so on and so forth. I'll leave this one as ABC. But I think you can see how that would make it very easy. I could just copy them and then change them real quick, just change a few, little bit of the information. New time data entry with clock means that I want to start a new time entry, but I want TPS to keep track of the time for me. So you can see it started this time entry at 940, which is the time right now. So at 9.40 in the morning, I'll come in, start the clock, fill out all the information up here, and then just let that clock run as I do my work. And then when I come back later and I stop the clock, TPS will calculate how much time I worked on it and the amount that should be charged. So I'll fill this out and show you how that works now. Over here we have our, I'm going to skip a little bit, over here we have our stop clock. So I'm going to stop the clock right now. Let's say we got interrupted, I stopped the clock, I started doing some other things, okay? And then continue time data entry with clock means that I want to copy all the same information and start the clock again. So it's basically I'm going back to doing the same job. I'm going to go ahead and start it again. You can see it kept all the same information in here, but it started a new clock. The single employee is what most of you will be using. You're going to be starting out just entering time for yourself. Multiple employees is used for the admin personnel to be able to handle multiple employees at once to make changes or to view multiple employees time entry screens. As I told you, the stop clock is what stops the timer that you're using. Set whip status will set these to whip. So if I were to come here and set this one to whip, you can see they start out in time entry status, which means it's just a line of time entry. Until it's set to whip, it is not in billable status. Now that I've set this one to whip, if I were to go to the billing screen and look at Cottonwood Industries, this would show up there so that I could bill it. The calculate tools is basically just a calendar. When I open it up, it brings up the month of October because that's what I'm in right now. It gives you the options to see new, whip, and other, chargeable time, non-chargeable time. So if I just wanted to see chargeable or just see non-chargeable, I could unclick these. Since we have chargeable and non-chargeable both clicked here, right now I'm just seeing the hours that I've worked for the clients. If I change this to amounts, you can see the amounts. I'm going to put it back on hours. And then down here you can see my year-to-date chargeable and non-chargeable hours, my month-to-date chargeable and non-chargeable hours, and week-to-date. Then I have the ability to print, exit, refresh, go to a specific date, and I can get to the help screen. Using these buttons up here I can cycle through previous and next years and same with the months.
down here it shows you the totals. So if I were to click on a few of these, certain dates only, it would tell me the total for those dates. Create a report just allows you to create a report for exactly what you see on the screen here. Select all time entries. If you click that, it selects them all. So if I have a lot of these showing up on the screen, a lot of unwhipped time, and I wanted to whip it all at once, I could do that. I could select it all and then hit the light bulb, and it would whip it all at the same time. The merge similar transactions is going to take the ones that are very similar, like the two that we started with the timer here, and merge them together. Let me go ahead and stop the clock on this one, though. All right, so we have these two different time entries for Miss Dottie Randall. If I click the Merge button, it merged them both together because they were basically had all the same information, so it merged the like ones together. Send email to this client. This will work as long as you have the client's email address in the client properties, and also you have to come here to Tools and make sure that your Outlook is turned on, that your Outlook connection is turned on. Bank hours is a place for you to keep track of extra hours you've worked that are outside the regular working hours for your office. So it's time you're keeping in the bank to be used later. So let's say in April you work 12 hours a day for a few days rather than your usual 8, or maybe 16 is more likely, I don't know. You'd keep track of that up here. The trash icon will delete a time entry as long as it's not whipped. So for example, let's get rid of this Dallas one here. I click delete. It's asking me am I sure. Yes, I've deleted that one. Sort name and client ID. If I click on one of these, you see we're right here where we're choosing the client. Right now I have it on sort name because for me that's easier. I like to see my sort name for each of my clients. But if I wanted to search for them using the client ID, I could change it to that. So maybe in your office you do everything by client ID. So when you do a new time entry, when you're going by your client, you see how now they're all in ID. Whereas when I had sort name, they were all showing up by the sort name first. Of course, over here you have your year to date, month to date, and week to date chargeable and non chargeable hours. And then over here, I told you I would tell you about this. Your agenda kind of area here is you could actually, instead of entering time here the way we have been doing it, you could come here and let's say at 3 p.m. you wanted to enter time. Just double click in here at 3 o'clock. I'm going to do one for, uh, let's do this one here, Newton and Brayburn. You'd fill it out just the same here, but it shows up down here for you too. So, and at that point, I can actually grab it. I can move it around. If I wanted to move this to 2 o'clock, I can extend it. So if it actually took me all the way until 6 o'clock to finish, I can do it that way. And it will reflect that over here. See now it says 2 o'clock all the way through to 6 o'clock. And you can scroll through the days using these buttons here or use the auto arrange option to put everything in order. And then, of course, these columns, just like an Excel spreadsheet, are adjustable. So you can make them wider or make them more narrow and adjust them to your liking. And down here, lastly, we have our date for the timesheet here, the chargeable hours, non-chargeable hours, the total hours you've entered for today, the total amount, and the date and time. And that's about it for the time entry screen quick overview. Make sure you check back later for more detailed videos on how to enter time, change it to WIP, and all of that information. Thank you for watching.